Okay. You know, I flew up from Boston. I'm not going to do my arms are tired because they aren't. But one thing now with taking a plane is you can bring an knife on a plane now. Have you heard that? You can literally bring an knife on a plane. You can bring, there's people at home saying, yes! You can bring a knife on a plane. I can fucking mile high club and you can just see them on the plane. Right? And think about it. If I bought a joint on a plane, three years in jail. What do they think I'm going to do? I'm going to go up to the pilot and put it on his neck and say, look, motherfucker, fly this plane to Cuba, or I'm going to smoke this joint and get this whole goddamn plane high. <laughs> I mean, come on, we're crying out loud. All right, like, like I said, I'm, I'm getting a little older here, and uh, in fact, so old that I forgot what the hell I was supposed to be saying. <laughs> Let me see. Eights, T's, papers, screens. <laughs> okay, uh... Right, okay, yeah, getting older. You know when you know you're getting older is when you start watching the weather channel more than for the local forecast. You know, I find myself walking around the house, yeah, it's gonna rain in Minnesota. Yeah, those fucking farmers here, I'll tell you, man, they don't get any rain. My daughter says, Dad, you live in Boston, what the hell are you talking about? I know, but they need the rain over there and they haven't taken a shit in a week. That's just an addendum. <laughs> And another thing, all you guys, there's nobody 50 here yet. But let me tell you what happens when you get 50. You go into your, your doctor's office, and he said, like he said to me, he said, Mr. Dean, we are now allowed to stick metal things up your ass. <laughs> and it says, wait, 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 stick metal things up your ass. It literally says that. It's a fucked up age of home. So, you know, I don't know, I guess he's, you know, call up, you know, they're looking for colon cancer, they're looking for... Hemorrhoids, Al Qaeda, <laughs> Vault. I don't know what that. Except, except it scared me when the doctor was. See, he's putting on a glove. He's smiling. Yeah, we're gonna be doing an annual exam here. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm going. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And, you know, one time I came out here and I had to go to a specialist in Carlsbad. So I hear him in Carlsbad, and I'm laying down on a table, and I got all of this metal sticking out of my butt, and he walks out of the room. I mean, I felt like I was being raped by the Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting there with all that crap and he walks out of the room and I think, what the hell am I going to do here now? But the good thing about it is that I did move three degrees that way. I must have created a signal because 50,000 people in La Jolla got HBO free for six hours, man. It was great. It really was. You know, there was this, uh, thank you. There was this, um, uh, there was this article in the Boston Globe, which is a very kind of like the hoity-toity newspaper of Boston. It said, man emasculates himself in jail. And I'm saying, wow, you know. For those of you who don't know what the term emasculate means, they had it in the other newspaper, a redneck newspaper, man cuts off dick and stir, you know. <laughs> and I'm wondering, like, wow, you know, like you're in jail. What are your social options? You don't have any social options. So for all you football fans out there, let's get a metaphor going. This man went from being a quarterback to a wide receiver. <laughs> And you know, and what does he do? He flushes it down the toilet. I mean, at least John Wayne Bobbitt, you know, she threw it in the field. I mean, he had to fight a fucking raccoon to get it back. But at least he got it back. You know, it had a couple of gnaws in it. Give me fucking... You know, this guy flushes it down the toilet. I mean, and how would you like to be the maintenance man that cleans the cesspool? He goes home at night, his wife says, Did you have the day dick? Yeah, I found the dick. <laughs> Puts in a jar of alcohol whenever he's ready to, to watch Monday Night Football. And she's bugging him. He goes, here, go fuck yourself, kid. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I always thought, now we get Obama in for a second term. And I always thought, wouldn't it be cool if Obama wasn't really, he doesn't really talk like that. Like, Obama is more of a inner city black man than we all know. I mean, you know, he's not this articulate man who, you know, and he's got presence, you know, maybe, maybe he's a little bit ghetto in his ass, you know. So I figured this is what I would like his second inauguration speech to sound like. America, we're going to move ahead. Things are going to be fine. Wait a minute, man, fuck all this bullshit, man. I've been talking like a white man for six goddamn years, and I'm sick of this bullshit. You're going to see the real Barack Obama. Now, for his first thing I'm going to do. The White House staff is going to be, I'm firing everybody, and the Romney family will be doing house cleaning duties. And Romney will be cleaning the kitty litter, and my personal butler will be met. 
And after I kicked Tag's ass with a threat in my ass, he's going to be cleaning the kitty litter too. Okay? There's going to be some changes in the monuments around here. There's going to be some different names. First of all, I'm sending the Crips to Dick Cheney's house. And we don't have to go any further than that. Okay? Uh, I'm going to have Hillary Clinton bitch slap Michelle Bachman all the way back to Minnesota. As much as she wants. And then back again. Start lunch, man. You go, Hill. Then what's going to happen? You're going to start changing some monuments around here. The Thomas Jefferson Memorial is now going to be the George Jefferson Memorial. <laughs> the Washington Monument will now be the Denzel Washington Monument. <laughs> Testify. You go, sister. <laughs> well, anyway, that's about all I got for you. I'd like to thank you and uh, thank you very much.